Hi there guys, this is my uh, SMK B2 rifle. I'm sure you've seen loads of them out on the uh, on the web. Uh, very cheap rifle, I think you can get them for like 25, 30 quid now. Um, this one didn't cost me anything though, I inherited it. Um, but as, if you've been looking them up, you'll have seen that they've all got like really crappy brown sort of painted stocks. They've obviously been painted on with a brush. Um, and, yeah, they look terrible. Um, I thought I'd do this video to show you the work I've done on mine because if you look, it's got a really, really nice finish now. And the wood underneath actually isn't too bad. Um, now do this it cost me about probably you know, 25 quid and a lot of elbow grease and I think that's the, the sort of the truth of this rifle really it isn't actually that bad um, its main downside really is just purely um, you know the time that it would take to sort of cure the stock properly and um, do all the work that I've done to it but you know you could buy this for 25 quid spend 25 quid basically on all of that um, and you're away. Uh, if you look, I've got some paint stripper, I've got Birchwood Casey True Oil, which, you know, after a bit of research, I found that was generally what was recommended by most people doing this sort of job, and Birchwood Casey uh, Gunstock Wax. Um, I've got three grains of sandpaper, um, and that's P60, P100, and P150. I've got this um, very rough purple sanding block which I had to use initially just to get the paint off. Um, a top tip with that, use, use the paint stripper because it will make your life a lot easier. You just sort of smear it on, leave it for you know 10 minutes or so, and it just peels off quite easily and you can sand it off. Um, once you've done all that, um, go onto the finer sandpaper and so on and so on until you've got it completely smooth and nice. Um, and then you can start adding this stuff, Bertrand Casey True Oil. Um, use rubber gloves um, because if you get this on your hands, it doesn't come off. Um, well, it does, but you know, it's very, very, very difficult to get off your hands, and it's, it's not particularly harmful, but it's just a real pain in the ass. Um, so uh, yeah, get rubber gloves, um, pour a bit on there, um, and just work it on, um, and get it completely covered. Um, <laughs> Lucy Dog trying to get it to shop there. Hello Lucy. Um, and then hang it up on the ceiling or something. I used like a coat hanger um, and just hooked it, you know, through through here um, and left it to hang. Uh, it, each time you do um, apply the uh, the oil, um, as I said, cover it completely, hang it up. Um, you're supposed to leave it for two hours, but to be honest, it's been really hot here lately, and uh, I left ended up leaving it 24 hours. Um, after that. Get some wire wool um, like this. This is double zero, very fine wire wool, and uh, give it a sand all over um, so to get it as smooth as you can. Don't worry about it too much. You might have the odd run and stuff. Um, clean it up as best you can. If you do have a run of, of, of oil, don't just scrub at it with this because what happens is the bits of iron get stuck in it and it makes a horrible mess. So, um, so yeah, you know, avoid those bits. Um, don't worry about them too much. Um, and then obviously oil it again, another 24 hours, sand it, oil it again, and so on. I did it six times. Um, I would say minimum four. Um, some people have been known to do, do it eight times. Um, after you've done all that, leave it for a few days because you, you can let it sort of properly cure and harden so the, so the oil's rock solid. Um, and then you'll see it's got a nice shine to it. Um, but it'll have a shine to it because it's all rough, basically. If you look carefully at the stock, they'll be bubbling and all sorts all over it. So go over it at that point with some more wire wool. And, you know, don't be frightened of it. Kind of give it quite a good um, good going over. And, you, you know, you're going to probably take off like a tenth of a mil or you know, probably less than that, to be honest, from the whole area of the rifle. And basically it will then have quite a matte finish. It won't look shiny anymore, but it will be very smooth. Um, once you've done that to get the shine back, you can then put some of this this wax on, Birchwood Casey gum wax, just, just smear it all on, again with some gloves, 
um, leave it to dry for like 10 minutes or so and then use something like this like a mic microfiber cloth and give it a good buffing and you'll see it comes out looking like that now um, I've also added a scope uh, this was I was quite lucky with this to be honest my friend Tom who I'm sure you you're, you're familiar with um, he won this in a competition with um, I got a shooter magazine but uh, he wasn't going to use it, to be honest. He's, he's won a rifle as well, which he still hasn't got yet, although that's another story. Um, but uh, this is a very good scope. It's 3 to 9 by 32. Um, so he basically let me have it for this project, um, which is kind of him. Uh, I think he just wanted a bigger objective lens, to be fair. Uh, so it's all looking really good. I've um, had all, it all apart. I've tightened up all of the internals. Um, I've cleaned the barrel. It's um, looking very good. I mean, if you look at the action here, be careful not to bang that on the table too hard. Um, there's no real, well, there's a little bit, of, there's a little bit of wobble in it, but not very much. And certainly when it's closed, there's none whatsoever. It's nice and, and solid. The other thing that you notice as well with the iron sights, you would imagine this here would get in the way of the scope, and, and that too. And obviously, you know, looking at it. You know, it should do really, but it doesn't. To be honest, it's fine. <laughs> it's um, so yeah, it's a really good rifle. I mean, I haven't shot it yet, to be honest, since I've done all this to it. Um, previously, it was it was doing all right. I mean, they're supposed to be at 450 feet per second, which I suppose is about nine foot pounds, something like that. Um, some would say that's not enough to hunt with. I would disagree, to be honest. As long as you're shooting within 20, 25 yards, um, this will kill rabbits and pigeons and things, um, especially if you use a nice lightweight pellet, um, like these ones. It loves these SMK Spitfires in uh, 2 2. Um, I've actually cleaned and oiled these previously, um, but they're really nice. They, they're really fat. They're really fast, so it ups the muzzle velocity a bit and uh, aids penetration. So anyway, um, I hope you this might inspire you guys to do a similar job. Um, you know, all in. You know, you're talking well minus the scope, 50 quid basically. So uh, anyway, um, I've got more videos coming soon, so uh, like and subscribe.